today's video, I will be working on a painted mug of my favorite Ted Lasso character, Roy Kent. I started by printing a picture that I wanted in exactly the size I wanted to go on my mug and then cutting it out so that I could trace an outline. I really wish he had a second arm over there, but you get what you get. Once the basic shape is done of your outline, you can add your finer details on the inside and then go ahead and start laying down a base coat of your first color. Here I'm laying down a skin tone. Uh, it's kind of light for his color, but I'll be adding at least three more layers on top of this. So it really is just a color to kind of soak into the clay and something to build up to. Continue blocking in all of the colors on your painting so you have one big base layer. Adding a second layer of the same color makes it more opaque and easier to absorb all your highlights and lowlights. This is my favorite underglaze color. It's called Electric Blue by Amico and it really holds its color. It does get a little darker when you add glaze on top of it, but if you leave it unglazed, it's really bright. Once you have your full base coat done, then you can start adding some highlights and shadows. Here I'm working on his hand, which is curled in a really hard position and I really struggled with it. Sometimes it's nice to flip it upside down or in a different direction to give you some new angles to work with. Once your base coat's done, then you add a basic layer of shades and highlights, kind of where you want to start. And then you can go down to a smaller brush and really start working in the more opaque shades and highlights and the deeper depths and the higher highlights. Faces are really difficult to paint, at least for me. I like to have my reference photo really close at hand so I can compare the colors that I'm creating to the colors that are in my photo. And I also like to add as many layers as I can. Even if I mess up, I add another layer on top or I add a little water to kind of erase it by soaking it back into the brush. One other thing that's worth noting is that with underglaze, you will notice as you paint and it dries, it actually dries lighter than what you're looking at. So you can kind of know what your glaze is sort of going to look like before a firing by how it is when it's wet. This was the opposite of everything I knew about painting, whether it be acrylic paints or watercolor or even painting a wall. Everything seems to dry darker, whereas this really kind of turns powdery and much lighter. So you won't know what it's going to look like unless it's a little bit wet. So remember the colors that are going on as you're painting as opposed to when they dry. As you can see, I switched to a smaller brush to work in finer details of his face. It's really important to dry your brush instead of rinsing it every time because it holds some of those pigments when you're trying to blend together. So especially in something so small as this, you'll see me wiping my brush. Well, maybe you won't see me because the napkin is behind the cup, but I really do wipe more than I rinse so that I carry over a lot of the pigments from my last brush dip and then blend them together to create a more cohesive color combination. I'm still using my tiny brush to fade in some skin color into his five o'clock shadow beard that he is so famous for. It ends up being pretty dark, which is exactly what I was going for. Enjoy a little bit of detail work. This big swish right there is a great example of what your glaze will look like after it's fired because you get it wet so you can kind of see what it will look like once it comes out of the kiln. Here I start to work on the tiny details on his jersey which takes a steady hand but it is really fun.
the yellow I'm using here is called Intense Yellow, and it's probably the best yellow that Amico has to offer. It is really expensive though, it's like $60 a pint, but it does come out really super bright, and I use it on my University of Michigan mugs as well as this blue, and it, they both come out great. They're my favorite glazes from Amico. Here I'm just attempting to make some wrinkles in his jersey as he's holding the soccer ball. It kind of smushes up the fabric right next to it. It's really hard to do, but I tried my best. And it didn't come out as well as I would have hoped, but I still enjoyed doing the process. I leave the highlights or the whites for last because they sit on top of the rest of the glaze. It's a good idea to let your um, underglaze dry before you add the white highlights because sometimes they'll get blended in so much that you won't even see them at the end. This decal on his shirt was so small that I really didn't add as much detail as I wanted to because it would have just gotten lost in my portions for the dog and the numbers in the sides of the emblem were not even legible, but you can't really tell if you're not looking that closely. After that, I clean up the edges of the outside of his stripes and then add that detail of yellow. As well as on the bottom of the stripe. here is the completed Roy Kent. If you're anything like me, you probably should cover your painting in some wax resist or any kind of resist so that you don't accidentally drip some glaze on him and then try to wipe it off and smear all of your hours long work. I always dump a whole bunch of glaze right into the inside of the mug and then swirl it around and dump it out twisting as you go and that really completes the inside of the cup and gives you a really nice layer. The outside has three coats of a celadon called cobalt and that is the end of this mug. Here it is after firing. Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video.